here. No. Why can't you leave, leave the cookie alone? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why y'all got to mess with the cookie. The cookie is just fine as it is, right? It's got, right? Uh, so, like, maybe, maybe as far as it goes, some, like, brown butter in your chocolate chip cookie with some mm. really good chocolate. And then, like, if you want, if you want to sprinkle the salt, if you don't want to sprinkle the salt, right? Bing, bang, boom. I love a good cookie. There's nothing like, better than like a, I'm simple like a, that. a perfect like chocolate chip cookie here. <laughs> like, why we got to mess with the cookie? All of a sudden there's ice cream and and, and like a crinelle and and like a sugar swirls. Get the, get out of here. No. Hi, welcome to the Modern Waiter Podcast. I'm Marlon Joseph, the Modern Waiter, where we discuss all things restaurant business. Learn something. Laugh at something. <laughs> On today's episode, we are discussing restaurant desserts, and here to help us with today's episode is the host of In Your Mouth podcast, In Your Michael Mouth Munoz. Hey, yes. ba, 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 <laughs> but first, <laughs> the intro. Tired of working deadbeat jobs for lame pay. I'm tired of getting fired and hired the same day. If you know the rules of the game, then you'll stay. As usual, I'm joined by my good friend, Danny DeVillo. What's up, what's up, what's up, people? Welcome, welcome, Michael. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Well, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to uh, not be driving the car. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, put your seatbelts on and take a ride, man. Yeah. So it, you are the, the host of In Your Mouth podcast, and I'm wondering... Among all the things that you put in your mouth, I'm hoping dessert is one of them. Um, most definitely. I, I am. I always say I am a savory girl over a sweet. But like once I have my, you know, sodium intake, you know, fed, federally regulated so sodium intake. <laughs> You know, um, I'm definitely a cookie monster. I've been having pregnant lady cravings for cookies a lot lately. Okay. okay. Cookies and chocolate. Chocolate is, chocolate's it for me, hon. Yeah. So savory, am I going to guess that a salted caramel something is in your uh in Yeah, your definitely. House? But it has to be the right amount of salt. There is this cookie shop that's around where I live that I go to, for, I frequent, but some of their cookies are very salty. Like they serve mm. a salty cookie, and if that's your thing, great. But like, I don't need that much of a salt pocket. Okay, you know, like an over salted something. But I definitely like a a hint of you know a flake like balance a, a flaky yeah. salt. Uh, yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. You, you do need a balance. You need just a hint to to balance out the sweet. But too yeah. much salty is like, mm, is it really dessert now? Right. I mean, but then again. Um, how far are we going to bounce this ball? Is a cheese plate dessert? Oh. Oh. I love cheese. Look at that. Look, dessert? stumped. <laughs> stumped. You were like, I didn't maybe, I didn't expect that. Maybe maybe like a brie cheese. No, I mean there there's a million restaurants across across the world you can go to and as dessert a cheese plate is on there. Cheese I plate with it, some yeah. You know, some port some fruit, yeah. Some yeah. port, oh yeah, and some a port wine, uh, some dessert wine, a little manchego, a little fig jam. Ooh, I think. Uh, so, what's our definition of dessert then? Is it just simply something that's after dinner, or is it? Does it have to be sweet? I mean, you are the modern waiter, are are, are you not? <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so, how are how are we defining it today? Hello. Okay, so let's look at, we're going to analyze some favorite restaurant desserts. And anything from the old guard, the classics, the favorites that are kind of have that old school, old timey feel to the heavy hitters, the must haves, and whatever your final, your contenders are, the worthy, but in their own right, they, they deserve to be, you know, mentioned and talked about. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're missing a component because... What are the characteristics of a good dessert? Would you say? Was that uh, was that one for me? Um, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Ca characteristics of a good dessert. Well, not overly sweet. I mean, I guess this is subjective, right? Because there are people out there that like really love like candies, like 
you know, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, whether it's chocolate, there are chocolate haters out there. So what qualifies a good dessert to me is that it's balanced within like sweetness and things that I love and things that I love are certainly chocolate and it doesn't have to be overly exaggerated for lack of a better term like mm -hmm. uh, simple is best you know I love a good tiramisu right and you know well, it's a good tiramisu when they're really not that sweet you know yes um, absolutely and Desserts. But but I I tend to drink my calories these days. Give me an espresso martini, you know. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, now you're talking my and, language. And call right it there. dessert. There you go. <laughs> we can we can we're gonna certainly get into all of that. And for me, the characteristics of a good dessert is I eat with my eyes as well. So I like presentation. Presentation is as important as having the dessert itself. Uh, uh, yeah, having a good taste in the dessert. So for me, the, the colors have to be varied, the dimensions, whether it's, uh, you know, Jeff, I steer away from a cookie because it has like one dimension. It's well, two actually, but it's, it's relatively flat and round. And I well, like with the cookie, you got to add a little ice cream, a little whipped cream, a little, you know, cherry, you brighten it up, you add some life to it. Okay. So Danny, you, you like whipped cream? No, but you, you, you were just talking about eating with your eyes. Only in yeah, the eyes. true. <laughs> you know, so it gives that yeah, exactly, but it does give that visual appearance, and it makes and it adds that dimension of layers. Like True. let's say you have it. Let's say if you had something as simple as a cookie, then you added ice cream, then you put a little whipped cream, then you put or cherry or sprinkles or whatever you want. It, it makes it grow and it, and it gives it uh, depth. What are we doing here? No, why can't you leave leave the cookie alone? Okay. <laughs> I don't know why y'all got to mess with the cookie. The cookie is just fine as it is, right? It's got, right? Uh, so, like, maybe maybe as far as you go, some, like, brown butter in your chocolate chip cookie with some mm. really good chocolate. And then, like, if you want if you want to sprinkle the salt, if you don't want to sprinkle the salt, right? Bing, bang, boom. I love a good cookie. There's nothing I love, with better milk, than, like, a, I'm simple a, like that. a perfect, like, chocolate chip cookie here. <laughs> like, why we got to mess with the cookie? All of a sudden, there's ice cream and, and, and like, a crinelle and, and like, a sugar swirls. Get the, get out of here. No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> now, you know what? I'm, I'm messing with the cookie. I, I find the cookie to be an adjunct. You know, I'll put it on something. I'll crumble the cookie up. Uh, for me, I'm a soft cookie person. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm fresh out the oven when I eat my cookies. You can't wait. I like to. I love. <laughs> I like. Like they need to sit for like three minutes, but just so where they get that crispy bottom. But that's about it. I okay. like them still warm. All right. Now uh, let's talk desserts of the old classics. You mentioned tiramisu. That is the first thing that comes to my mind with the the classic dessert. Uh, you'll find restaurants. From from your childhood, you know that's yeah. on there. That's a banger. The tiramisu. Mm -hmm. What what else is in that you know genre for you? I mean, there's um, bananas Foster. There's creme Ooh. brulee. There okay. is uh, every restaurant across the world. This mo molten chocolate lava cake. Oh, nope. Yes. Nope. Can we get a little bit more creative out there, y'all? Now, actually, um, that but that just took the place of the remember the original brownie bowl. So I think the lava cake is just taking over that. I mean, where what where are we eating here? Is this Applebee's or is this <laughs> <laughs> the French Laundry? Like, <laughs> well, back in the day when I was a kid, everybody had a brownie bowl. <laughs> oh man, you. I don't think so. Everybody does. I mean, the lava cake reminds me of a cruise ship. You know, it's like you're going to have the. to me, that's that's hitting the chocolate lover cake side. The uh, the 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 melted chocolate. It's mm -hmm. it's not that imaginative. I agree with you. Where are you going with this lava cake now today? But it is one of the old school ones. Like, yeah. And I mean, there's a place and time for it. But like, you know, I'm paying if we're going someplace nice and I'm paying all mm -hmm. this money, you're really going to try to serve me a, lo a lava cake? Really? No. <laughs> like, and it, you put all this money do... into this restaurant and you couldn't come up with <laughs> anything better than a lava cake? You, you got to at least change the, you I gotta mean, change you, the name. Yes, or like open TikTok or something and like steal an idea. You know? <laughs> or something. <laughs> like, 
Really? True. You were you Love were that out of ideas there. for dessert that you had. Uh, I just paid like two hundred dollars a head here. Uh, not that I can afford that for some dinner. <laughs> like, but, uh, but isn't that normal in New York City? Pretty much. Uh, almost. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> legit. Legit. Not where they're serving brownie bowls. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's only one fifty there. My bad. <laughs> Yeah, you're getting a brownie bowl. Your check's under a hundo for sure. Or a four top. What about the uh, the apple pie? Let's round out the old guard with the apple pie. That's that's hard to dress up too. Um. Yes. I mean. All right. I I feel like we need to, because this is such a broad topic. Mm-hmm. We're we're talking about the old guard desserts, right? And I'm assuming, right, and correct me if I'm wrong, we're talking about going out to eat or are we talking in-home desserts? We're talking uh, about going, going out, out to sure. eat. Going yeah, out sure. to eat. Great. And then at what at what level are we talking about going out to eat here? Because, I mean, if, if we're going out to uh, a run-of-the-mill, a chain restaurant, sure, we'll find an apple pie. If we're going out to like someplace nicer, you know, you spending some money to take somebody out, you may not see that because that's not necessarily as common, right? We'll see like a galette de roi or a, or an apple tart or mm-hmm. something like that, versions of of that. Of, of the classics, yes. Of the sure. classic, mm-hmm. but like, so it's just like, yeah, apple pie is, is definitely an old standard, but at what level are we talking here? Because I don't necessarily think that I'm seeing that, and I mean, granted, I live in a certain special area that, like, you know, a food mecca, per se. Yes. Yeah. You know, that n- at no matter what level you're eating, that's still kind of rare here in New York. So, l- l- so let's go from, like, childhood until you had, like, your first job, and we'll call that old school. <laughs> because now that we have money, we do, we do de- venture out into different things, and we all kind of eat what we want to eat. Yeah. But... Um, well, let's go back nostalgic to when we were kids when our parents were still paying. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, <laughs> he's trying to shoehorn that that brownie bowl in there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna get back on plate. Uh, yeah, you real you really hold it onto that brownie bowl tight. <laughs> it's like, come on, let it go, let it go. We got some money now. I mean, yeah. uh, right? Like, like we we've had a job for a minute, okay? Yes, we have. Yes. So, <laughs> So, no, but, like, I mean, yeah, sure, if we're eating at Bennigan's, R.I.P., um, uh, <laughs> a, a, uh, an apple pie is certainly certainly a thing. Like, you know, uh, on – who mentioned um, – I don't know what I was talking about or with whom um, the other day on the podcast. Uh, banana splits? Oh, oh wow. wow. That's ice cream. That is a throwback. Sure. That yeah. is, and I was like, "Are we even eating this anymore? Like, who is making?" I don't this? even know. That <laughs> That's a this. lot of. There's a lot of junk in that for sure. There's, there's a lot a, of stuff. There's in that. a lot right? of stuff, and in it's that. so overly complicated. It's just like, who is making this? Like, what? And who? And who can digest that much dairy these days? Oh, I mean, man, it's a lot. just looking at it, just like seeing it across the room i'm running to the bathroom forget about three scoops <laughs> oh man forget three about trying to toppings. ingest it <laughs> yeah there's ice cream and whipped cream on the same damn plate you know oh toppings everything it's craziness right and what about- and, uh, and these kids with all these nut allergies and things oh yeah yeah it's over that's that's why the, the banana, that's why the banana splits is uh is splitsville it's not yeah, as canceled. it's gone canceled yeah. <laughs> yeah canceled quicker than paula sure. dean was back oh, in the <laughs> i went to one of her restaurants and talk about desserts there was they were just so sweet it's it's outrageous well, it was too southern. sweet like um speaking of uh, like an ice box cake delicious yeah delicious oh, yeah. you know old school desserts um Jello? Are we are we still eating Jello? I've never had Jello in a restaurant, but but I have Jello in my fridge right now. I mean, I've, <laughs> I in, in in New York, you go to a diner, you can get some peaches floating in Jello still. Oh, yeah! No, wow! Wow! Or in New in, in some of those New Jersey diners, I'm sure you could. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that is a throw! I've never thought of that Jello. Uh, I that that uh, bunt cake mold. 
Yeah. And you could see that. Oh, my God. Yeah. Talk you to know? me about the the bangers, the 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 heavy hitters, your must haves. If you're going out, let's say let's bring it up to a nicer restaurant. Now. Yeah. Now we have a little bit of money. Yeah. Now we have a little nice. bit of money. What's what's your must have when you open up that menu? Are you looking for a souffle? Are you looking for a souffle? I've don't, I I feel like I've had a souffle once in my life, you know, because they're Very so tem- they're so temperamental that nobody wants to make them. Um, but as far as like going out, you know, when I uh, there's one person that I go out with that will one of my friends that will always ask for a dessert menu. And okay. I'm always like, why? Why? <laughs> why do we need it? Um, you know, because we are going, like, we've already had a meal and we're planning on going out. And the minute the mm-hmm. dessert hits, you're, we're more like going Oh, to yeah. Bed. That, 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 that's comatose time. Exactly. You're right. If yeah, you're going out. You're going to bed. The, yeah. But, like, yeah, I I mean, there, there isn't some really people... much of, like. I think one of the last things I had for dessert with him was like a tiramisu or we go out to eat Indian a lot. So like uh, some lassi, delicious, some mango lassi. It's like ice cream. Um, basically okay. It's like South How about Asian a cultural cream. question? Does anyone do desserts like Americans do dessert? I find that we we do like sugar like no one else. Well, I mean, the French certainly do dessert. True. In a massive, massive way. I feel like I feel like there's a whole uncharted like African dessert sort of uh Ooh. terrain that nobody is exploring or talking about like things that contain sorrel like hibiscus and things like um or like Caribbean like Afro Caribbean sort of like you know that rum cake and a black cake mm. and and oh, Marla loves a good rum cake. I mean Love it. There is uh, there is a whole uncharted world of of that area of the universe of the of the of the earth that I feel like is <laughs> uncharted and is doing is doing things that are um tropical and complex and spiced and and okay. like really really spiced and and things that um I feel like no one talks about I got to look into that because especially the uh, the African desserts, I'm from the Caribbean, so we do the black cake. We do the, they call it pudding, but it's not what you think. It's no, it's, like not, it's not pudding. Yeah. And like, but even still, like the rice puddings and the tapiocas and like, mm-hmm. and um, things made with sweet plantain and, and even, even down to, um, speaking about South Asian, uh, Thailand and the coconut sticky rice delicious right is it dessert because it's rice yes no maybe it's, it's i mean it's really sweet and true yeah no it's, it's, def- it's, it's definitely a dessert item for them yeah yeah right i mean i i i think yes we as americans are are go big or go home as far as desserts go because mm-hmm. we have an addiction to and this is a longer podcast for another time we have an addiction to gmo processed white sugar Yes. You know, <laughs> yes. white bleached sugar. Um, so it's obviously it's and things that are in excess, right? Things like diners, drive-ins and dives and like those like Food Network shows that like are like the can you eat how much of this one thing can you eat before you either throw up or win the prize? You know, yes. that thing. Yeah. Um, so like it's man like versus food style. Yes. Or it's just like, you know oversized ice cream things or oversized like cakes or oversized like mm-hmm. yeah or deep uh, frying we definitely Twinkies. have cornered the market in like we're just gonna do it because we love uh, we have this white sugar addiction but i think there's i think there's other places out there that are really doing dessert in a very special way that like isn't isn't what we do and it's not too much. It, it it just gives that little bit of balance. I remember. Being I mean, have you ever had black cake? Black cake is a lot. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a lot. Delicious, <laughs> but it's a lot. You, you know? can't have a regular slice of that. You have to have a sliver. You yes. get that idea. <laughs> just a little piece. 
I, legit, because you're pouring rum on that for like three months. <laughs> yes. yes, you let it soak in and then you come back and hit it again. Boom. And then you yeah. come back and you hit it again. And then when it can't take any more, you top it off. Exactly. Like, <laughs> like, like my last date. Oh, <laughs> hey, hey, oh. <laughs> so let's uh, let's switch gears a little bit and we'll play a game of fan or not a fan. And we'll talk about some desserts and get your opinion. You, Danny, as well. You could jump in at any time and just let me know what you feel about it. Although this one, I know the answer to as far as Danny's concerned. Fan or not a fan? Creme brulee. Um, mm, I'm riding the fence on this one. I really Come am. on. Our friendship depends on it. <laughs> oh, really? Um, oh, God. Because it's so easy to, like, ruin. You yes. Know? Yes. It it's is. so it easy is. to ruin. And But a good creme brulee? You got to keep it classic. You got to keep yeah. it classic. <laughs> a, a good classic creme brulee slaps. But is it real? Yeah. But is it really? And this is why I'm on the fence. Is it really all smoke and mirrors? Because all we really want to do is crack that glass sugar top. Yeah, that's uh, all you really want to do. So is yes. it more a sensory thing than an, a, an actual like? Oh, this is amazing. But that is that is a part of how I love it. It's it's I'm actually hearing my dessert as well as seeing yeah. it and as well as tasting it. Love yeah, it. Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, food is all encompassing. But I I just I don't know. I feel like I feel like it can be a little smoke and mirrors, right? Because mm-hmm. we're all excited to crack this thing and then it's just like, okay, it's creme brulee. I'm like, here we go. Okay. <laughs> you know? Almost like panna cotta, you know? It, panna cotta is like milk jello, right? Yeah. But- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get some flack from that from somebody, I'm sure. Of course, yeah. <laughs> not not milk jello. <laughs> Just don't, just don't say anything bad about the tres leches. They'll come after you. Oh, my God. Now, that's delicious. <laughs> Can't eat it, but oh. it's delicious. Oh, man. So, now, I, I, you know what? For me, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'm a fan. I'm, I'll, just, I'll just come over, and I'll be like, I'm a fan of the creme brulee. All right. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Yes. Okay. Marvel makes a mean creme brulee, by the way. I do, but I keep it simple. I, I'm not putting any, you know, hazelnut or, you know, just... It could only ruin it. I just keep it simple with the, it's re- so good. the real vanilla bean. Yeah. And it's, for me, you can't have too much of the the cream part. It has to be a balance between the amount of of actual body and the sugar. Because when you have those that are too deep, it's just the balance is off. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, bread pudding. Fan or not a fan? Bread pudding. Mm. Yeah, also controversial because you can really mess up a yes. bread pudding. You can. You can mess that up. I mean, um, I keep it simple, stupid. Bread pudding. Uh, raisins or no raisins? Uh, we'll start with no raisins because a lot of people are turned off by raisins. I happily, I, I happen to like them, but I get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah, so I enjoy we'll a raisin. No raisins. If it doesn't have raisins, I don't want it. Give me the raisins. Ah, okay. Nice. You know, so, I I agree with you, but I see where people, some people cannot stand a raisin. Their nature's candy. What's not to stand about them? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, question, Marlon, does your favorite bed pudding, and we know where you like it from, okay. does that have raisins in it? It does not. It does not. Most, okay, okay Caribbean bread pudding has raisins almost all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, American bread pudding could be more towards the 30 percent with the raisins gotcha. yeah okay and as far as restaurants are concerned it's a great way to repurpose you know old bread and most restaurants they're gonna serve bread and then you're gonna find them to have bread pudding but like michael said you can mess it up by doing too much putting you know, it, it comes with... out like too dry or too soggy or yeah. mm-hmm. you know um uh, a little known fact about me, uh, I had a small stint as a custom cake baker for oh. a little while. And so wow. I used to do like custom like wedding cakes and things for people out of my, I had a cottage kitchen, that's the term, like out of my 100, oh, wow. out of my 120 square feet in Times Square, 
right? It probably <laughs> it probably was illegal at the time. That was many years ago. <laughs> probably not talking about that. Many years ago, but I uh yeah, I used to do custom cakes. This is the cake that killed me. OMG. Oh, that wow. is beautiful. That is. Yeah. Folks, man, that is that this is the perfect show for you. What do you mean? They can see that. It's all good. <laughs> that is that is fantastic. That is that fantastic. was gorgeous. So, so yeah, you know um, you know the sugars. I d- I do know the sugars very very <laughs> well, right? Although <laughs> although I'm I'm drinking monk fruit sugar in my in my coffee these days. I've never even heard of monk fruit sugar. Yeah, it's like low glycemic and keto. Even though I'm not keto, so like it doesn't spike and there's like no calories allegedly. Okay. I don't know. I'm I'm feeding myself chemicals. I feel. <laughs> I will, uh, I will, I will look into that. I like the alternatives. And a fan or not a fan? Carrot cake. Uh, definitely a fan. Uh, one of the wedding cakes I made was a full carrot cake wedding cake. Okay. That thing weighed nice. like that thing weighed like fifty pounds because you know carrot cake is heavy. Carrot yeah. cake is heavy. Sometimes once you love can't even slice cake. it. It 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 starts to. Yeah. The inside starts to. You know, do a little... Once again, carrot cake controversial. Carrot cake controversy. Raisins or no raisins, and then nuts or no nuts. Uh, I do like nuts in my carrot cake. I like nuts in my carrot cake. Yes, I, well, yes, I love it all. Uh, um, He was going to say I like nuts. (laughs) (laughs) You don't know me. (laughs) I heard heard the stutter and I assumed. <laughs> my, my Listen, we are not on a pod. We are not on my podcast that's named in your mouth. Like I can make jokes like that. I I am a guest in someone's home here. Okay, <laughs> I am trying to be respectful. <laughs> no, you're fine. You can let it all out. We don't mind. <laughs> we we are we are very light here, and uh, yeah, we don't take ourselves seriously. We like to. Uh, we like to enjoy ourselves, make but our guests it's feel uh, like yeah, uh, high controversy. I find about people and their carrot cake proclivities, liking <laughs> nut, nuts or no nuts in their carrot cake, and then raisins or no raisins. Okay, I'm a whole kitchen sink kind of guy. Gotcha. Get it in there. I know how you feel about cookies, so we shall move on. Now, this one is near and dear to me. Fan or not a fan? Sharing dessert. Um, I am absolutely a fan. My entire existence these days is um, all about sharesies. When I go okay. out with anybody, we, I literally, if I, especially if I know them, I'm like, can we just share everything? And then we start order. We'll like, it'll, we'll pretend we're at someplace fancy and we'll course things out. So we'll order something, share it, order something else, share it, order an entree, gotcha. share it, maybe order another entree, share it, you know? And mm-hmm. then you get to have, you get to taste everything. The best of both worlds. Yeah. Like Marla that. doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Marla does not share. He does not share. He does not play well with other kids in the sandbox. <laughs> not, not as far as dessert is concerned. Dessert, I'm a, I'm a hoarder of the dessert. I, I'm, I'm like, I'll get your own. Get your own. Yeah, bet. Yeah. <laughs> fan or not a fan, whipped cream. Ah. Uh. Homemade or ready whip? See, I feel like I'm okay with homemade and definitely the ready whip, no thank you. Yeah, but- exactly. That's that's the train I'm on. Unless Trader Joe's sells this coconut whipped cream. Okay. For for the lactose kids. Um that is delicious. Look at you coming and, through. And, that, and that's like a ready whip? Yeah, it's like a ready whip, but it's coconut based, coconut okay. cream. Okay. Fantastic. My man has try all it. the things. He has I the like it. alternative sugars. He has the alternative whipped cream. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. it. The alternative lifestyle, some may say. Oh, <laughs> some may say. <laughs> <laughs> now, fan or not a fan, you know those flights of dessert, the little shot glasses? You... The little desserts. Yeah, the little like, desserts. Uh, like, like Seasons 54. Like, pe- pe- my, like, like Pettifors? Like, like. They they give you they they're it's a taster of instead of a big uh, yeah instead like of a pe- big old dessert pedophores pedophores yeah okay. okay do you yes fan no fan yeah I mean it depends what they are like if we're, if we're having a smattering of like little things like 
you know, we could have like a little like opera cake, opera cake, classic dessert. We didn't talk about it. Um, like, or, you know, but if you're like blending, I don't know, blending strawberries and cream and putting it in a shot glass and calling it dessert, I, I no. You know, what no, I mean? like some places they'll put the, the carrot cake in a little shot glass or, you know, the I've never seen it done with a creme brulee, but it can be uh, it's it's just so that you can taste more of a, a whole dessert tray than to have one of a big dessert. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? I mean, the more the merrier. Yeah, I like that style. You get, you get a little more for your palate. <laughs> you mentioned an espresso martini, I believe. Yes. Yes, he did. Now, he how did. do you like your espresso martini? <laughs> fan or not a fan? It, does it have a splash of Bailey's or it's just straight, straight dark? No, a classic espresso martini, period, dot com. Right. And I do it actually because I'm a uh, I'm a tequila stan. Um, so it's the Casamigos because Casamigos has like a little bit of a vanilla back instead mm-hmm. of the vodka. And the espresso and the Kahlua. And like that espresso has got to be fresh. Yes. You know? Yes. And shake it up. Bing, bang, boom. Three coffee Very beans. Nice. Very nice. Oh, classic. okay. Classic. That Bailey's. L- listen, I can't, I can't do all that milk. Nope. <laughs> true. It came over for me. I do like a little splash of Bailey's in mine, but I can go both ways, and I can and I've had it both ways, and I love a good espresso martini. So, and I kind of am digging that recipe, so I might have to make that myself. Uh, Casamigos espresso martinis. Let me tell you, vodka doesn't agree with me anymore. I turned forty-one, and I was like, no more vodka. We're fighting. This <laughs> the tequila espresso martini is delicious. I've had it a number of times. Uh, times a bartender turned me on to it. He did not use. Uh, uh, the Casamigos. Uh, I think the bottle was like a Delotila or uh, forget the name of it, but it's it's delicious. So I agree with you for sure. I am a fan. Now, when you're at the end of the meal, are you doing a coffee or a, an espresso? Uh, hopefully, my date. Oh, <laughs> there it is. That's the right answer, everybody. That's the right America, answer. That's the right answer. And that is that is the like perfect. That. <laughs> that's the perfect segue into telling everybody. In in case our listeners don't know about your show, tell them about you know tell them about your show or recommend a show of yours that you've done recently that they must check out. Yes, I want to go back though. The the question was coffee or what. Oh, your date. <laughs> or, ex- or espresso. Coffee, coffee or, or espresso. espresso. Oh, definitely espresso. Espresso. Yeah. And I learned I from really my coffee, mother. Really. I learned from my mother. Shout out to Mama Gladys. Um, Mama Gladys. That Woo-hoo. you get a little Zambuca. Okay. Right? Uh, you get a shot of Zambuca, but you don't need a full shot. Right? And mm-hmm. you, you pour you pour a little bit into your espresso. Okay. Delish. Delish. You don't need mm. any sugar. You don't need anything else. Right? That's so, but you, but you have to have you you have to like that like anise licorice zambuca flavor. Gotcha. But mm-hmm. it's it's fantastic. It's fantastic. So that's a little tip for you out there. Um, my show, my show is called In Your Mouth. It's the only food podcast on the airwaves that celebrates L G the stories of L G B T Q people in the food space. So okay. what does that mean? It's you know the kitchen can be uh, like many other professions, can be uh, overly hyper masculine and full of toxic masculinity, and so it's hard enough just to walk in there to be yourself as a normal person, right? Because there's a lot of there's a lot of madness happening in most kitchens. Forget it. Forget it. If you're a woman or um, uh, a person of the LGBTQ nation here. And there's there's that. And then having an understanding of that behind the line or in most food spaces um, is, is little to none unless that space has been curated like that. Um, I didn't set out for the podcast to be like that, but four and a half years mm-hmm. later, it's what it kind of took on a life of its own and now provides a platform to all sorts of queer people doing amazing things in food from people like Kaylin Allen, who you may know, I just dropped a name, um, uh, 
you can rem- you probably remember Kaylin Allen from way back when the Ellen show, but he became famous okay. because he was the one doing um, critiques of people making food. He'd be okay. like mayonnaise. Oh no, no, you can serve that to your children, <laughs> right? Uh, Southern hysterical, and then Ellen found him and made him famous. To like Neil Patrick Harris's husband, David Burtka, who's um, a Le Cordon Bleu trained chef. To Michael Twitty, who is a food historian, um, queer, Jewish, um, oh, black wow. historian, uh, who mm-hmm. traced the food pathways from the enslaved back to Africa, James Beard Award winning. Um, so it's all these really interesting stories. And yeah, we'll start with love of food. And all of a sudden, I'll find my spa- uh, I'll find myself talking about, you know, like growing up in the kitchen with grandma and then all of a sudden being thrown out into the streets because you've been uh, because you've come out of the closet or like, you know, so it's all of this like stuff through food, all these stories through what these people are doing, you know, um, in the food space. And it's been a lot of fun. It's been a blessing. I'm like I said, I'm four and a half years into into it um as far as favorite episodes there are so many um i recently for the first time in four and a half years took a break in july my first break ever and i really we i I run a weekly podcast you know my first long break ever i've taken like a week off here or there um where i've just kind of thrown and i didn't even really take a break i called it my summer throwback series where i was pulling up some of my favorite episodes from like a couple years ago just okay. in case you missed them, because there's a lot of content there. Um, the Pride series is a really great place to start because you kind of get a smattering of, like, people's stories. It's like a collective of people's, like, coming out stories and things and views on just kind of what it's like being out in the world today. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of, like, great things and great stories uh, out there and I always say to my guests as much as it is my platform it's mm-hmm. actually a platform created for you for them yeah absolutely to tell your story so this is as much your space as it is mine fantastic man that sounds that sounds like a good journey starting with food and you you expressing expressing yourself yeah it just opened so many doors and even before I hit record I mean we had a conversation before we hit record uh, yeah. fellas and I always I don't talk too much before we hit record, but I always say, listen, I'm not here to be Barbara Walters. I didn't set out to like ask you any sort of hard hitting questions and mm-hmm. and whatnot. I'm here to celebrate you. I'm here to I love to be an idiot. I love to have a good time, you know. I love to laugh a lot. But if the conversation takes us someplace serious, it's not necessarily what I set out to do, but we're It's not we're a bad talking. thing either though. Yeah, yeah it's we're not talking. a bad thing. You're letting we're it talking out. about yeah. it, you know, and and we've had We've had some like some intense conversations from from Chef Denovan Miranda. Oh, such a great episode! And it's part of the summer throwback series as well. Um, I saw I found him on Chopped, watching an episode of Chopped, and what uh, attracted me to him, uh, besides him being like this beautiful Filipino man, I mean stunning, but um, what attracted me to him was that they he really pushed this storyline uh, of his authentic self and him coming out to his father on his deathbed. And, oh, wow. And I usually don't start in that place, but the podcast just started in that place. I was like, well, here we go. Yeah. And, ooh, it was a roller coaster, but it was, like, beautifully intense, you know? Yes. Sometimes you're on that ledge of creativity and you just have to go with it. Yeah, it's just, it's just like, okay, well, we're here. We're going, you know? <laughs> Fantastic. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today about desserts and our favorite desserts about your show. Uh, I've been wanting to have you on for a long time. So Danny and I are very appreciative. So yeah, I'm very great. I'm very, very grateful um, and honored just to be allowed into your space and having, you know, you giving me time to come on and invite me on. I mean, it's it's very rare um, that I'm, uh, like I said, that I'm in the passenger seat here. So it's, <laughs> it, it's always an honor and a pleasure. So thank you as well. But I have a question for you all. Uh, Death Row Desserts. How, how is this not a thing, right? Death, Death Row, Row Desserts. desserts. If you, uh, like, you know, like your last meal, your last <laughs> meal. Like my last meal definitely would be 
uh, a cheese platter, meats and cheeses, breads, like give, like you know, give me the whole like tapas experience for my last meal. Yes. But like, what would be your death row dessert? Ooh. Uh, well, I tell you what, my my aunt who has since died a few years ago, she was amazing with desserts, amazing in the kitchen and. She made these butter tarts that were out of this world. And I felt bad for her because she took all day to make them. And it takes two seconds to just gobble one up. Crush them. And we would crush them. So if I had a batch of hers on death row, I would be I would die a happy man. Bring on the guillotine. Bring on the lethal injection. Whatever you got. I got a smile on my face. Yeah. Like uh, do it. Do it while I'm eating. (laughs) Yes. I'm not going to lie. I can honestly be very simple and have me some hot chocolate chip cookies on death row and call it a day. Okay. <laughs> yeah. with, with, with a big frozen, like frosty mug of milk. Oh, I'm all in. Yeah. I, I, I'll skip the milk because I'll probably shit myself anyway. Like if I'm, it dying. doesn't matter. We're, we're going. Yeah. It's all over. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> but like, but I, I definitely, definitely chocolate, definitely like a chocolate chip cookie or like some like three layered oh. like chocolate mousse like cake or mm, something yeah. like, or like black forest. Okay. It's definitely chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Getting all you know? the chocolate. Not a lava cake though. Or a brownie. No, brownie. no, no. No. Uh, F, F, no, F her. F her. Right? Um, like, like Mariah said, I don't know her. Oh, wow. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks again. And we look forward to having you again. In the future, I will definitely keep up with you. And Michael Munoz, check his show out. It's in Yo Mouth Podcast Yo Mouth. weekly. And he is back, baby. I'm Marlon Joseph, the minor waiter. I'm Danny Villain. Subscribe, 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 people. See you later. Later. Somebody from hell, my classy, sassy, missy, prissy, my gangsta, gangsta. Shorty roll L's, make money on a DL. Spanish accent, body from hell. Yo, I got this little shorty that I call my little lady. This is the one that drive my brains crazy. Cause even when I'm swayzy, she's still gonna have my baby. Because she has my heart and she drives my